Fishing trips kick off early in Kenya with hotel pickups before daybreak and offshore ferry transfers at 6.30am. This is the ferry boat out to the moorings then we're away. It's a bit swelly. Even at that time of the morning it's getting hot as the tender drops off the various groups at their allotted boats. I'd previously tried catching sailfish at a number of locations around the world, but prior to visiting Kenya, this had been something of a bogey species for me. I remember mentioning this fact in conversation with Dave Lewis, who suggested I try Malindi. In fact, he insisted, adding that if I made the trip in February, it would be impossible to fail. Thanks Dave, just the kind of added pressure I needed. But I have to admit it did sound good, and not just for the sailfish, as skipper Angus Paul explains. Morning, uh, my name is Angus Paul, I'm the skipper for you today. Uh, we're fishing on, uh, on Neptune. We'll be mainly looking for sailfish, but we'll be able to catch a, a big variety of other fish. Wahoo, kingfish, tuna. Um, we might give it a go light baiting for giant trevally. There have been quite a few around. Um, been quite a few wahoo, they're good fun. Uh, Dorado, but today we'll mainly, we'll mainly concentrate on closer inshore. No sooner had the boat cleared the reef and the small lures were out looking for tuna and bonito to strip cut for the sails or to use as live baits for the GTs. Diving birds picking off panicking bait fish driven to the surface by bonito quickly gave us enough fresh bait to kick things off. A thin belly strip lashed to a panel rig with a coloured skirt ahead of the hook is one of the favoured trolling baits in Kenyan waters. And it wasn't too long before one was spotted and picked up. Finally, I was hooked up into a sailfish. The first thing the crew does when a sail is guided to the side of the boat is to spike it with a tag. Then with a good firm hold of the beak, the hook can be removed. If a fish looks likely to make it back okay, it's towed for a short distance face on into the floor sending oxygenated water over its gills. Then, when it kicks, the hold is relaxed and it's away. My first sailfish hooked, tagged and released and all within 25 minutes of setting the trawling baits out. But not all sails recover sufficiently to be released. This unfortunately is one caught later in the day that didn't make it back. Thank <laughs> you. 
From the moment it was released, we could see it was in trouble. So, without a second thought, one of the crew was over the side after it, in a race to get there before the waiting sharks. That, for me, is taking job dedication just a little bit too far. It turned into quite a busy morning with seven more sails, kingfish to £45 and wahoo to £55, plus small bonito and tuna. Time then, according to Angus, for a change of tactics. So, when the next lightly hooked bonito came aboard, it was quickly sent back down on a live bait rig, fished deep close to the edge of the reef. This was to bring one of the toughest encounters I'd experienced in many a long time. Hooking a big GT is comparable to dangling a hook from a motorway bridge and latching onto a passing truck. Unlike Wahoo and Kingfish, speed is not the GT's biggest asset. It's that sheer dogged strength and power that eventually wears you down. I certainly wouldn't want to be hooking too many of those things on the same trip. with the sails, GTs are disgorged, tagged, revived in the water, then released. We also had this less common Big Eye Trevally. Despite the best efforts of the crew, sadly, three of the sailfish failed to make it back but the wahoo and kingfish were deliberately kept back for eating. The intention had been to release all the sails, but with those that were struggling certain to be ripped to pieces by the sharks, it was better that they were put to good use back on the shore. <laughs> 